we're back, people, and today we're going to film on Channing Tindall, Miami Dolphins linebacker, preseason performance versus the Falcons in week one. I thought of the whole linebacker group, Tindall was the best performer. I wasn't too impressed overall with the rest of the guys like Mike Rose, Aubrey Miller, after going back and watch the film. I thought Tindall stood out the most. His physicality, his athleticism still stood out to me. Those are definitely his biggest strengths. I think, you know, he's a very, he's more of a risk taker. Like he just, he's a run and chase linebacker. He sees one thing and he's just going to chase it down. I think there's some things he does need to work on, especially like in coverage or just when it comes to like concepts, first run concepts, like being a little more anticipatory, being a little more instinctive. He usually just reads his play instantly and then just runs to his spot. He doesn't like stack and track. Sometimes you have to be able to stack and track and work with patience. But like right here, it ends up working out. It can just get you into troubles in certain situations, as I'll show later on uh, with his type of play style. But boom, he recognizes, you know, outside zone flowing away from him and he just shoots across and immediately pursues into this gap over here and then does a good job beating the offensive lineman this offensive lineman tries to you know get out to him climb to the second level but Tyndall reads the play too fast and gets there too quickly with his athleticism and helps makes this tackle he's a pretty solid tackler in this game overall he's just got to be a little bit better uh, at playing with patience and uh like when especially for his like gap scheme runs going with polars reading the flow of plays just a little more anticipation he said that in his interview and i agree anticipation is super key and you got to be able to you know read these flows of these plays but tyndall did show some improvement to what he was doing last season so overall i mean he's going to be like a you know second string linebacker on this team probably the number four guy behind you know baker long and then probably duke riley so he could see some playing time this year depending on injury or if he really steps up but i did see some encouraging signs in this preseason week one game Sometimes his aggressive gap shooting, like this is like only two plays after that first play I showed, sometimes it just gets him into trouble. He just tries to shoot down, uh, make a play in the backfield, and sometimes that just takes yourself out of the play. All the offensive lineman really has to do sometimes is just get a hand on you, and when you like, sometimes you over-pursue to the side here, you try to really get aggressive, and then it creates a cutback lane. You just got to be able to fit into your runs, uh, the, the run scheme, and then be a little better with your opportunities to shoot gaps. Just be, you know, take calculated risks. I think Tyndall likes to win here a lot. He sees this open up. The offensive line makes a good play because he's blocking down, moves that guy out of the way, knocks him to the ground, and then Tyndall tries to shoot through and he just chips him just enough. So I don't blame him for taking this risk, but sometimes this gets you into trouble. You just have to, you know, read with the flow. You got to stay in phase with the running back. He gets a little over the top there and then guy ends up taking himself out of the play could be a little bit better just more anticipation on his part being a little more patient at times too uh it's something he can grow at for sure and he i think he will get better it's just i don't know if it will ever be a big strength of his some positives and negatives about this play as well i think he does a better job staying patient not just shooting down the field i like to see this out of your linebackers a lot of times the most instinctive linebackers their best play is when they're being patient they're stacking and tracking working through the trash i think he does a better here job here versus this run up the middle uh, he takes on this tight end at the point of attack it's nice to see him at least take this guy on square him up uh, do a good job stacking him and then shedding off of this now i just want to see that a little closer to the line of scrimmage like he ends up making the tackle like five to six to seven yards down the field if he can you know get a little bit closer to this uh and then you know shed this block like maybe a yard farther this way and then turn into like a two three four yard gain it'd be a much better rep so it's just something he needs to work on but there's still some positive takeaways to have from these types of plays this was the final play that Tyndall played in this game and it was probably my favorite rep of his just stacking tracking staying patient working laterally with your footwork love all of this he was playing instinctive here they're you know running outside zone to his side here just saying uh he's staying patient ready to fill into his gap and then he scrapes over the top like usually right here you see you think 50 is going to be your edge defender but he's working off what i think it, that's a good day right there just working off what he's doing he usually he's going to be the force defender but he kind of gets caught up on this double team so he scrapes over the top here and he ends up overtaking becoming the force defender instead of filling while he's takes this gap so he basically replaces him over the top stay square always good to stay square here because it helps you move laterally better then get up field avoid those blocks and then stop your flow your momentum by changing direction and making that tackle for only a two yard gain this is a really nice play really nice improvement from what i saw to tyndall just a very excellent rep overall not just shooting gaps down the field very very nice work overall on that rep 
he's not the most instinctive in coverage. Uh, sometimes he gets pulled down by play action, and he doesn't have a, a great feel for stuff behind him. But when things are kept in front of him, he does a good job running and chasing to this. Like, this is not really his responsibility. Uh, Aubrey Miller is this flat defender over here and should have the, like, he's a middle hook defender. And he ends up missing the tackle. But it's nice to see him in pursuit and then help make this open field tackle, wrap this up limit this bigger it could have been a bigger gain after making the first guy miss so it's nice to see him at least pursue to this see things he does a much better job when everything is kept in front of him actually a pretty decent rep from the weak side position here is like oh will uh just in pursuit on the back side of you know strong outside zone lead he does a decent job avoiding the uh, number 54 right here who is climbing to the second level uh just in pursuit he kind of gets knocked a little bit out of the way there and 54 has a good angle on him he does a good job just slipping underneath dipping that shoulder ripping under and then still fighting through the contact where the o-line is trying to hold him and then getting and helping make the tackle down the line of scrimmage pretty impressive rep uh from the just fighting through the contact overall could have been maybe an even better play but still pretty solid what i liked what i saw from tyndall for the most part in this game Decent job here. Uh, I think versus a guard in space, this guard is uncovered, climbs to the second level, gets a pretty, you know, clean, like right here, Tyndall's kind of losing this rep, but he does a decent job. Like he does, he kind of helps on this tackle, but if that defensive tackle wasn't there to make the play, I think he does a good job getting off of this. So being able to, he's not the biggest linebacker, but he's got some power to him. He takes this guy on. You can see him use that left arm to create space and then torque him off and use the own momentum of the alignment against him so once this guy did hit through this hole Tyndall was there to help make the tackle slow him down he ends up getting about four yards just need to get a little bit uh upfield a little bit quicker to take on those uh those uncovered offensive linemen or be able to avoid them without getting washed out of the play but overall pretty solid rep i think on the back side of outside zone or even play side of outside zone he does a better job versus I just outside zone, outside zone in general, just recognizing these plays and getting to his spot. He recognizes flow pretty quickly here. He's lined up head up on the right tackle and he's still able to just boom, get out of his stance. Right tackle is not able to climb and reach him even though he has a decent angle and he just dips that shoulder underneath and helps, you know, be involved. He doesn't end up getting the tackle, but if the defensive tackles weren't there, he would have been right there to make this play from his pre-snap alignment, which is very, a uh, very difficult rep for him to make to be involved on this type of situation. He can still use a little bit of improvement, but this is a decent job here. When he can just spot drop and sort of read the routes that come in front of him, like he could do a better job gaining depth, you know, working his eyes, you know, matching things, walling things off. But number two comes across here. He at least takes away this window here, but I mean, if the guy quarterback waited a little bit longer, it would have come open. But he still reacts to what this quarterback's throwing underneath. He gets down, makes his tackle for a limited gain. I mean, it was a third and 19 situation. So good job just coming down and slowing this guy down and making that tackle. Uh, very good work, staying patient. He can make those types of plays in coverage, just not expecting too much when it comes to like real coverage plays down the field. Last play I'm going to break down, Channing Tyndall getting a sack here. Uh, he's a pretty good blitzer here. He's just sort of, you know, playing in the middle of the field and he sees a QB breaking the pocket. So he just gets down, closes space pretty quickly there, forces the QB to just take a slide. It's a third and 11 situation. Um, just, you know, spot dropping down the field. Decent job here because if, he, if he was trying to throw this, you know, dig route to this receiver behind here, Tannendill does a pretty good job of at least getting in that throwing lane and then the QB escapes and he just gets downhill. He has really good closing speed. Uh, I feel like that's not even his full speed either. Like, he can definitely even play even faster than that. But overall, liked what I saw out of Tyndall in this game. Some mostly positive takeaways, but things he can still improve on. So, I but I still feel like out of these linebackers that did play in this game, he definitely had the best one. He definitely proved himself that he belongs on the roster as at least the second-string guy. Um, I don't know if anyone else will make the— Like, I don't know how many other off-ball linebackers will really make it, really make it after— you know, because they also, I didn't mention Andrew Van Ginkle, who's going to be like a mix of edge and off-ball linebacker, and those could be like their main five guys uh, with the other four that I already mentioned earlier. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.